the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Let me start by truly appreciating the Lord Jesus Christ for the privilege to be here and then and then to appreciate um pastor shola for taking this burden this vision and making this happen alongside all the organizers and then please let's honor all the servants of the lord jesus christ here i came into a very powerful session of the altar call and my heart if if that was all that i saw and went back i would still be fulfilled truly speaking hallelujah I, I don't intend to keep us for long i was just sharing with pastor shola that um, i believe in what god is doing and more than we who are the privileged vessels that he's using we must focus on the bigger picture of what god is doing praise the lord and so all we are doing here is just building momentum to what he's doing we'll be here just for a few minutes i just thought to just introduce our session and then we'll pray i heard that um there have been massive prayer sessions that have been ongoing there there is never enough prayer for anything praise the lord you pray and you pray again um prayer for instance has many assignments in the life of a believer and um, for many believers they understand prayer as the instrument that can help you to obtain promises and that is correct there is a dimension of prayer allocated for obtaining promises but then primarily the assignment of prayer is not just for obtaining promises prayer is one of the spiritual mechanisms that transforms you into a higher and a superior version of yourself the bible says in luke chapter 9 and verse 29 it says as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his garment became as white as raiment so the assignment of prayer really it's not just for receiving things the assignment of prayer is to help you evolve into a a greater dimension of yourself spiritually hallelujah when we pray we are not just conscious of receiving things or even contending with the forces of darkness these are all dimensions of prayer you can pray as an instrument of warfare and intercession you can pray to obtain promises but the greatest assignment and the original assignment of prayer jesus never prayed because he was weak jesus never prayed because he was incapable remember that was the word the word of god even filled with the holy spirit and yet he prayed he never prayed as god god does not pray but when he became a man he prayed because he spake a parable luke 18 and verse 1 to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint hallelujah praise the name of the lord so i'm just saying this to challenge us so that when you find one minister after another coming to challenge you to pray don't allow the devil pray on your flesh to make you feel that you are wasting time what is this times of prayer are times of growth in the spirit hallelujah when you grow the bible says they set themselves and while they were praying and fasting the holy ghost said unto them it is in the place of prayer that the holy ghost speaks to them 
not just one person he spoke to them everyone heard it separate me paul and barnabas but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head one more time but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head please sit for a minute ezekiel chapter 19 from verse 8 and 9 i will just share something and then we'll pray ezekiel chapter 19 Ezekiel chapter 19 I sense in my spirit that there will be much prayer in this conference because of what God is doing in the lives of individuals and there are very clear spiritual indices let me say this to measure and sponsor the spiritual growth of an individual there is no mysticism around spiritual growth spiritual growth happens at the instance of engaging yourself with very exact spiritual principles number one the ministry of the word number two the ministry of prayer number three the ministry of fellowship with the spirit number four the ministry of fellowship with the body these are the indices that make for spiritual growth so if you say you are growing we have a right based on these parameters to probe your growth if we do not see your passion for the word your passion for prayer are we together now we do not see the times that you spend with god you cannot grow in arbitrarily in secret no it is always the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer and the ministry of your personal fellowship with the holy spirit and the diverse ministries of the body of christ this is what can make any individual to grow one of the things one of the burdens that god has put in my heart especially in this season is helping to challenge the body of christ to not only return to god's patterns but to rest to be restored to doctrine the the zone of safety of the believer is when we return to doctrine a methodical approach to our spiritual understanding and a methodical approach to our growth the narrative and and the deception of knowing god for yourself which is not a very which is not a wrong statement but the devil has cashed in on that thing so people just evolve out of nowhere with with patterns that are not verified are we together now it is these kinds of pseudo christian experiences that continue to lead to the diversity of errors that are destroying the body of christ the bible says there is an ancient part jeremiah 6 16 it does not ask you to look for it or look try to invent another one it says to stand ye in the way and to see and to ask for that ancient path that old path he says when you find it walk in it and you will find rest for your soul hallelujah yes so we we have to we have to respect doctrine the doctrine of scripture the bible even says that god himself 
honors his word above his name are we together failure to do this will lead to experiences by and from well-meaning individuals there is no parameter for vetting spiritual experiences because how based on what parameter do you tell me i'm wrong if i tell you i'm hearing a voice now and the voice is speaking how do we vet whether it is the voice of a demon or it is the voice of the holy spirit because as far as i the recipient is concerned i am hearing a voice and if the voice says this man his name is pastor shola and i say sir is your name pastor shola and he says yes based on my experience i'm comfortable with that influence what becomes the basis now for discerning the purity of that voice what if there are multiple voices speaking to me at different times you see all of this this is not even what i'm talking about oh i don't even know how i got here now talking about this is until we become matured maturity is not measured just by greek and hebrew words maturity is not just measured by longevity around church activities maturity is the degree to which you have submitted first to the holy spirit and then number two to doctrine the bible says that they submitted themselves to the apostles doctrine and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread acts chapter 2 and verse 42 so until we come to a point where we are able to submit to the doctrine of scripture so that when a believer is saved we know what to do with him regardless the church the the spiritual growth of that believer should not necessarily depend on what church he attends there should be a formula that is greater than denominations the same way there are many schools in abel kuta am i right primary schools now all of you here did not go to the same primary school but at the end of it there are certain things that regardless the school you should have the bible calls it the things that are most surely believed among us so that whether a believer gets saved from xyz assembly or gets saved from xyz cathedral we are happy all together that he's saved why because the doctrine that he will submit to for his growth is greater than the personal biases of the denomination are we together now until we exalt doctrine doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it is a a predefined body of knowledge allocated to produce a specific kind of people i would always give this example if you have a doctor someone who is studying say in a university here and another person is studying in a university in the north another person is studying in a university somewhere abroad if all of them eventually grow to become consultants did you know it is possible that the first time they ever meet will be in the theater and they will not be afraid there's no need being afraid of one another because they are the course content they submitted to to become consultants is greater than even the lecturer that becomes the basis of their confidence they are not going to say who taught you was it a muslim lecturer or a yoruba or an Igbo lecturer the most important thing is if you were a consultant then we know that doing this kind of surgery should not be strange this is how it must be failure to exalt the holy spirit and doctrine above men of god above ministries will lead to all kinds of casualties so i can go on a 10 day 40 day fast sincerely so in the wilderness because i'm looking for more of god and because i do not know that encounters have rules of engagement i can blindly open up my spirit to any influence i find in that forest and have all kinds of strange extra human encounters just because it is a spirit being does not mean it's of god the realm of the spirit is a vast realm with all kinds of influences paul said i'm already preaching my night session there is as it were many voices he says and none of them is without significance the voice of the holy spirit is not the only voice you can hear you can be exposed to all kinds of influences and people have sincerely they don't have to be evil the compromise of doctrines has led people 
they are not bad they are not you know love jesus christ but then they find themselves in these experiences and they begin to interact with celestial entities that are not exactly of god and they come up with messages they come up with impartations and you cannot necessarily say the individual is fake because he did not intend to deceive anybody but at the same time the results that are being produced clearly show that the hand of god is not there and the reason is because a sincere individual together with a wrong doctrine still leads to danger the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and that they will give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons seducing spirits if you understand the character of seduction seduction has no power over you until it comes in partnership with something that is already in you for instance if i am not hungry the temptation to turn stones to bread cannot work for me because there is nothing in me that connects to that temptation so seducing spirits have to study your appetite to introduce themselves to you so if your appetite is to become that prophet they will come from the angle of the prophetic if your appetite is to see souls worn they will come disguising as a spirit that is planting passion for evangelism are we together let's go back to our text ezekiel chapter 19 verse 8 and 9 let me read it from king james thank you jesus has god spoken to someone already the bible says then the nation set against him on every side from the provinces and spread their net over him he was taken in their pit verse 9 and they put him in a ward in chains and they brought him to the king of babylon now pay attention they brought him into the holes that his voice should no more be heard upon the mountains of israel the reason why they subjected him to all those attacks is that his voice should no longer be heard upon the mountains of israel just a brief charge and we'll pray there are many reasons why satan attacks believers principally because he is the chief adversary of everything righteousness but more than that please listen carefully the way the realm of the spirit works is that there are demonic entities that are sent to regions there are demonic entities that are sent to families there are demonic entities that are sent to individuals but there are demonic entities that are sent to mantles they don't know the individual and they don't care whoever is the carrier of that mantle will be the one those spirits are sent to now the spirits that are sent to mantles have a singular assignment their assignment is to make sure that the voice the voice that becomes the beacon of light under the influence of that mantle number one never rises to that position and if for any reason he can through spiritual intelligence find his way to that mountain that he never remains there please pay attention i show you a mystery and we pray when jesus was born you would think just because he was jesus he would be left in peace the very the very episode of the birth of jesus was mad in all kinds of attacks they came to herod and they said we have seen a star and this star has signified that there is another king that is born herod called on his necromancers and his wise men and his sorcerers he said please go and investigate check the archives of history is there so and so a thing that should happen like this and they came back and said truly there is such an information and herod said another king he said all right so you go on with your investigation find that king and let me know so that i will come and worship him immediately
immediately the spirit of the antichrist knowing that prophecy was in motion began to move the king who was helplessly under the influence of that spirit to find jesus christ so that they would kill him the reason why they ran away with jesus was because he could die if they met him as a baby they would have killed him and he would have died the only thing is that his body would not decay because the word is incorruptible but he would have died are we together now and they ran away and they hid and eventually when herod had died jesus now began to live his life and you would think satan would let him rest jesus now having been baptized of john the bible says the spirit drove him to the wilderness and there he prayed for 40 days praying and fasting the moment he was done the first person he met was not the people in his prayer group or his ministry satan left the whole earth and was waiting patiently for one person let me assure you satan is not looking for everybody there are people he will see and pass you are calling him he will pass you looking for certain things there are certain mantles he is looking who is carrying it now because the last person that took this grace is already dead and as it is we have not found it on anyone so there are spirits allocated to mantles and can i tell you if our generation does not understand the art of dominion we will never be able to achieve the purposes of god it's not just about impartation and rema when you begin this journey there are attacks that you must be trained to understand and how to circumvent your way and continue to excel there are families and people today who have no business going through certain things except that there is a prophetic word on their lives that has brought the interest of satan there there are women who have no business with barrenness except that a prophetic information came that from that womb a prophet is coming and the devil says what did you say let's turn our attention to this family satan is guided by god's interest whatever interests god becomes satan's agenda satan does not by default just have an agenda he's called antichrist that means he depends on christ to give him the vision on what to do what is god doing that's what satan needs to find out you are not the only one who is finding out what god is doing per season satan is also interested so he depends on your intimacy with god and he probes into your intimacy as god is downloading the prophetic blueprint of your destiny you are not the only one hearing it the realm of the spirit is also hearing it and god is saying now i'm preparing you for a new dimension in the spirit and there comes these attacks and many believers are sincere but there is a lot of ignorance in the body as to understanding the devices of the devil one of it is what i'm showing you in this scripture the bible says this king was bound and kept in chains with a singular assignment that his voice should no longer be heard upon the mountain of israel The madman in Gadara. Why was the devil interested in the madman in Gadara? Because he had the destiny of an evangelist. That man single-handedly was responsible for 10 cities. I'm sure a prophet came and spoke when he was born. Thou little baby, you will become a great evangelist. And the spirits of the Gadarene said, leave every other thing. Come to this man. He was not an evil man reverse the story of his of his miracle and you will see that gadarin was under slavery because one man's voice was captured but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. So the next time Satan comes to Jesus, he comes directly and he brings forth three temptations. 
number one turn this stone into bread focus on your individual need and jesus taught him that the agenda of the kingdom is greater than tea and bread for me the next temptation was the temptation of spirituality he took him to a high city a high the temple and said fall down after all there is an immunity you have as jesus fall down he shall put his angels to watch over you they will bear you up on their wings lest you dash your feet against a stone and the third temptation was that of dominion and glory he took him into an exceeding high mountain showed him the glories of the world and said all this has been given to me you bow and i will give it to you and the bible says satan left him one synoptic account says he left him for a season the next time he will come back he did not come back directly as satan he came as he came through peter manipulating the compassion of peter to insist that jesus would not go to die and jesus discerning you would have looked at what peter was telling jesus if i have someone like peter and he's talking to me like that i will even make him my assistant immediately but jesus looked and said no this is just, this is beyond compassion satan get thee behind me he said peter satan has desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren the next time he would come to him he came through judas i have always thought that judas is not a bad man judas has received all kinds of insults in the body of christ judas was one of his most loyal people whoever you trust with money to trust you with money means there is a level of credibility read the parable of the talents to already give you a hint he gave on to some five some two some one according to their several abilities so he must have vetted judas that's why judas could not even do anything with the money and satan came through judas listen beloved people hear me your voice represents the platform by which and through which the purposes of god will be made known to the nations your voice represents your destiny your voice represents your relevance your voice represents your influence when john was in the wilderness the spirit of the antichrist through the pharisees came and they kept asking him who are you are you one of those people who are you and john made a very interesting statement he didn't say i am john he said i am the voice the voice I am the voice whatever subdues your voice has subdued your relevance and your capacity to noise the purposes of God has committed to you please listen to me the attack in this end time by the gates of hell is not just over the health of people satan is beginning to get desperate as he sees the time wrapping he's looking for voices voices potential voices and voices that are currently in the plan of god and as we'll be teaching later on there are many many ways and angles that he's coming in with all to silence your voice the bible says that they bound this man and locked him in a prison why so that his voice would no longer be heard upon the mountain of israel so all the destinies connected to that voice now will become victims of the captivity of one person so when i tell you that satan he will attack anybody but there are specific people that he's looking for in this end time and if you came for this conference it is not just because you saw a publicity material i tell you it's a solemn assembly from the realm of the spirit it's a summoning to come and learn the ways of god so that your voice will remain relevant announcing the purposes of the kingdom the bible says do not be ignorant of his devices satan has devices 
there are ways that he will silence the voice of many history is full of men and women whose voices were silenced because they did not understand the writings of the world to know how to keep their voices relevant this is my simple charge for us this afternoon and we are going to pray and cry unto the lord that he will grant us the privilege of having our voices remaining relevant on the mountain of israel that nothing and no one will be able to bind you like that man in gadaria the bible says the man lived in caves and he was bound hand in chain notice every time they caught the apostles they bound them and they kept them in prisons why so that they would not preach in that name again there was something about their voice and the preaching of the name it was causing people to come to salvation and repentance within the land can i tell you this instead of satan attacking one million people 500 people he will find out who do those 500 people listen to so if if god announces that he's bringing new mantle upon you that's not the time to dance and brag that is the time to return and say lord teach me because if you are elijah jezebel is coming mm. there are many of you because of the mantles and the things that god wants to do in your life there are higher levels of separation and consecration to the point that god will give you rules that does not make sense it is not for everybody it's his way of protecting what is on you and many times because we do not have discernment lord why is my life like this why do you inconvenience me this much and god is saying you are carrying through your voice the destiny of nations and there will be requirements can i tell you this in the realm of the spirit the proof of maturity is dependence if you are independent you are a child in the spirit john 21 it says when thou art young you are allowed to go wherever you want to go but when you become matured one will hold you so many of you have come here i believe god put this burden in the heart of his servant to call for a solemn assembly do you know why because there are many people young people especially who love god you know many times when i see a generation of young people with their passion i am touched by the passion but i'm also afraid of the ignorance passion and ignorance is risky because then what if i am thirsty anything that looks like water i will drink it We need to be able to lay off superstar christianity and apostle joshua selman and all of this nonsense and focus on helping a generation preserve this spiritual heritage of revealing christ you will be learning that one of the ways that satan binds men and shuts their voices is using this subtle evil of complacency why do i need to preach again when my voice is everywhere why do i need to fast again when i can lay hands on anyone and you stand up from the wheelchair let me tell you what happens one of the ways that satan can destroy you is to create an avalanche of commendation over your grace you can be commended to an extent that your voice becomes silent because there is something about the human spirit under the influence of applause and commendation there is commendation is like salt in the food if you put a handful of salt in food you have ruined the whole thing but salt is needed so there is a way that satan begins to raise people in the name of loyalty they will sing your praises to a point where fasting becomes unnecessary the things that you did that brought you there you no longer will have the the, the press for it again why should i pray eight hours why should i pray two hours why should i do what i was doing in the house of god and satan helps you by orchestrating men who can keep singing your praises 
until the praises become louder than the voice of God. Those of us that God is helping, listen to me carefully. I know some of you admire us and you clap and once we are coming in all the protocol that escort us, those are just little, little conveniences to show honor. Do not get caught up with some of those deceptions. If that is your idea of ministry and that is what you are building yourself into, then casualty will be waiting for you. Thank God for the honor. Thank God for all of these things that we receive. But can I tell you this? Complacency. Satan can participate in singing your praise. There is something about the human spirit when you are appreciated. And that is true. That is wonderful. But Satan knows what over celebration can do to a human spirit. It is not only when he attacks you with evil that he destroys you. Satan is not stupid. He has an advantage of age. He has studied this humanoid species of mankind. He knows our vulnerability. And he knows that when I am suffering, chances are that I will be close to God. When I'm trying to grow a church, when I'm trying to grow my influence, chances are that I will pay attention in keeping to the things that make for greatness. But when you get to a point where all the institutions of men are located for accreditation, now vet you and accredit that you are a man approved of God. There is no more point to be proved. The TV stations have accredited that God has called you. All the award institutions have accredited that God has called you. The ministry results have accredited that God has called you. So now what is left? If it's branches, you have it. If it's money, you have it. If it's miracles, you have it. If it's a good sermon, you have it. What is left? That is why the beginning of a believer's journey must maintain the formula and the protocol used in scripture. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. And at the end of everything, it is still God. I can tell you that many of us right now are sincere satan has tried the formula of backsliding and it doesn't seem to be as effective again because there are many people who are generally waking the body of christ up to the fact that look it pays to be fathered with god so satan has changed his strategy this message you see i saw it in a vision the reason why i would not say i saw it in a vision is because i want your understanding to be grounded on doctrine not a man's experience I, are we together now i saw that this thing the deception of manipulating the human spirit by giving you a sense of applause a sense of arrival and it now leads to complacency whether i pray or not you will not know all you know is the apostle joshua selman you love who you listen to but it is me and god that knows the current reality of our relationship I can bask in the applause of people whereas at that point with God your voice is going down someone rise up on your feet we are going to pray for two minutes or, or five minutes listen this prayer no moving around I like you to pray from the depth of your heart mean business with God you came for a conference a time where you will search your heart the first prayer I know that you have prayed and prayed but I want us to pray the prayer of the psalmist. He said, try my heart. Search my heart. Try it. If there is any wicked way in me, lead me to the way everlasting. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and pray, Abel Kuta. are you praying prayer warriors pray the vessels that will be used in this city pray 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 it is beyond impartation 
it is beyond listening to messages there are forces assigned to mantles there are forces assigned to destinies with a primary assignment of ensuring that your voice is no longer heard at the mountain of Israel this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind I press onto the mark of the high calling in Christ the Bible says looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him the Bible says he endured the cross he despised the shame is someone praying hallelujah now listen the Bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it admonishes us it says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight weight jealousy weight bitterness weight competitions weight it is not only sin you lay down you lay down weights weights useless weights competition comparing yourself to yourself it says and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus he says who is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame we must obtain grace to cry before the lord that every weight that's our next prayer point every weight now listen you don't have to be bad to be a victim of weights you just have to be human eventually you will find yourself in unnecessary competitions you find yourself in petty jealousy you find yourself distracted by so many things you are going to cry that every weight that will not allow you ascend to the mountain where your voice will be heard that weight must drop dead now lift your voice and pray mean it with jesus christ every weight it's time to grow in the spirit every weight every distraction every hindrance of the flesh every weight someone is praying weights that hinder your hearing bitterness hatred backbiting jealousy weights Somebody is 
says come unto me all ye that are heavy laden and I will give you rest his yoke is easy and his burden is light few more minutes and we're done for this session In the name of Jesus hallelujah last prayer point Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23 it says let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not the strong or the mighty glory in his might let not the rich man glory in his riches it says but let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me in this kingdom the pride of a believer is not just mundane achievements as important and motivating as they are i do not downplay the place of those things we need to make progress psychologists tell us that one of the indices the principal index that measures fulfillment is progress to the degree to which you perceive that you are making progress that is the degree to which you find fulfillment so i don't downplay the place of progress but let me tell you this the real pride of a believer in this kingdom is that you understand and you know him john 17 and verse 3 jesus praying said this is eternal life that they may know thee the one true god and jesus whom thou hast sent this is eternal life solomon explored everything that we desire to explore money reputation fame everything his eyes desired he pursued it so as far as human the human standard of achievement is concerned he got everything but hear what he said at the end of his life he said vanity upon vanity all is vanity that is not a statement to endorse mediocrity is a reality from the standpoint of anything minus god that is the result of anything minus god and he says here is the conclusion of the matter he says of reading many books there is no end and much study is only a weariness to the soul he says this is the conclusion of the matter to fear god and to keep his commandments he says this is the whole duty of man so we're going to pray can I add one more prayer point? Pray and cry that every force fighting the oil of God upon your life. They will not go by default. This is why you were given dominion. You are going to have to cause that spirit to let you go that you find visibility. Listen, listen, listen. I have met in my life I have met men of God, Pastor Sir. I have met sincere people, people of, of impeccable character, people of integrity and soundness. And I am shocked that even their community does not know they are there. Can I tell you, influence is important because it is not only important that your voice be heard, it must be heard on the mountain. Are we together now? Habakkuk chapter 2 says I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower there is an elevated position where you must be for the the purposes of God through you to be heard and known and there are spirits that have kept mighty men down I have met intercessors I have met prophets genuine people I have met apostles indeed I have met people that I myself had to just go back and say my goodness from whence did this kind of breed come from but you never hear their voice anywhere 
because there are powers zechariah chapter 1 from verse 18 son of man what seest thou he said four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against judah against jerusalem against israel three things judah your praise jerusalem your covenant and your peace are we together israel your promise they have lifted up themselves against it it says they have lifted up themselves so that no man don't lift up his head please take this last prayer point seriously there are many of you here god must give you visibility the truth is that by by the grace of god you have found expression god has shown you honor you have worked in keeping with the principles that make for greatness you have entered your season of appearing except that these horns have vowed to keep you down the way they kept all who are with you down but can i tell you this the bible says that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder and the yoke from off your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing you are going to pray with determination that in the name of jesus everything that has pegged me down to not allow this prophetic ministry find visibility to not allow this this apostolic dimension find visibility either in a bell kuta covering the glory of the assembly god has trusted me with or the group or whatever platform please lift your voice and pray some tree says many a day that rise up against me many a day that say there is no help for you he says but thou O lord art a shield for me you are my glory you are the lifter up of my head someone is praying release yourself from that age-long captivity there are daughters of zion in the similitude of Deborah that must rise there are men of fire and power that must rise in this time and hear me if you are silent you will be silenced Hebron dos kotopa toshka te brenda kete balakata. Declare thou that ye might test be justified. Go ahead and declare in the name of Jesus. Freedom from the captivity that stops me from ascending the mountain so that my voice be heard in israel pray pray who is like him Lion and the Lamb Seated on the throne Mountains bow down Every ocean rose To the Lord of Lords We will praise Adonai From the rising of the sun to the end of every day, praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth, all the angels and the saints sing praise Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the end of every day. Praise Adonai All the nations of the earth Hallelujah
hallelujah in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ now please hear me let me encourage you i want you tonight to invite everybody within this city whether there is if there is no space they can hang around anywhere because i believe that god will be doing three things tonight one will have the moments where the word of god would be communicated but then number two i believe that the lord truly is in the business of setting the captives free do not forbear with evil evil always comes pregnant if you leave it it will give birth to children around you are we together there are times when the lord will give instructions and say kill everybody plus the children let nothing leave so i like you to come prepared that whatever it is that has mocked god in your life if god be god he must come down this night we also have the opportunity to minister to the sick but more importantly i believe that god sent me on assignment to connect people to the mantles of their destiny this is not just impartation of falling down and standing up no that what has been looking for you the graces some of you have seen these meetings in dreams just help them please some of you have seen this in visions some of you what you see in your dreams and your encounters is not consistent with what is happening there are people pastors leaders of churches and ministries sincere people who love jesus but can i tell you it takes a connection with that grace isaiah 61 says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me too then it begins to list all those possibilities happen there because of the anointing so everything you would see from then on refer it to the presence of the anointing on, on you to love jesus sincerely and not contact the genuine grace for your destiny will end you in frustration let me tell you it is frustrating to not be evil you are not insincere you are not demonic you are not diabolical you are authentic yet you are still stunted you see you receive the same results with people who do not love god he said the spirit of wisdom came upon joshua because moses anointed him to anoint means to legitimize your operation to anoint means to declare you as legitimate in the realm of the spirit so that the realm of the spirit respects your operation the anointing is not just about oil it's a system of authorization right with hearts full of expectation lift your hands to him believing that he will walk wonders in the midst of his people let every other name fade away let every other name fade away till there's only you let every other name fade away jesus take your place jesus take your place Sing it one more time. Let every other name fade away. Shala Bakhu Sadani. Let every other name fade away. Till there's only you. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we declare that Jesus is revealed in this place. And Lord, I pray that your word will come with power. Let there be every manifestation of the spirit that you will in this place tonight. In the name of Jesus, let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. 
give our lives direction let mantles fall in this place tonight in the name of jesus christ god bless you please be seated thank you again hallelujah praise the lord it's really good to be here again i think this is last i was here it was right here and i think since the oh no 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 aside from when i preached for apostle achidume i'm not sure i've been here again so i'm honored to be here thank you so much for the love the reception and let me honor all the servants of god here present may the lord honor you in the name of jesus apostle achidume god bless you and honor again sir amen and amen We took our time to pray at the session earlier in the afternoon and um, the Lord challenged us as to the fact that one of the assignments of the gate of hell especially in this season is to silence our voice according to Ezekiel 19:9. it says that they bound him so that his voice would not be heard on the mountain of israel and we took our time to pray and tonight i just want us to look very briefly to the book of acts let's study for a few minutes before we pray now I began to challenge us in the morning again about the necessity for doctrine conferences like this among other things seek to restore us to an accurate understanding of doctrine doctrine um, is how believers are mentored doctrine is the cause content for the believers growth and maturity there is no other provision no other possibility for a believer to grow and attain stature outside of doctrine hallelujah praise the name of the lord it comes from the latin word doctrina it means a predefined body of truth that is intended to turn a people into something very specific and so when we random guess our spiritual experiences were not able to grow methodically to have that level of spiritual understanding that will allow us to be effective in ministry this is a believers convention and that means that in addition to the salvation please listen carefully in addition to the salvation of souls this also provides a platform to mature believers and believers become matured when they are enlightened when they are transformed by the accurate communication of doctrine so they now become people of stature and power not based on longevity around christian activities but based on the accurate communication of doctrine hallelujah it says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified hallelujah it's very very important that we understand that god intends for us to grow for as long as we remain children our experiences will not differ from they that are outside of the kingdom for the bible says an heir for as long as he's a child he said he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all hallelujah so how do we grow we grow by understanding the truths of god's word not randomly communicated growth must be methodical line upon line precept upon precept beginning with what the bible calls the foundational doctrines of the christian faith hebrews chapter 6 the foundations he lists six of them there are six of them that represent the pillar of the believers foundation that on the strength of those pillar you sustain the stamina to explore the realm of the spirit without the fear of being misled because every one of those pillars sustains the ability to keep you and guide you 
attempting to delve into dimensions of the prophetic the apostolic visionary experiences without these doctrinal foundations will inevitably delve any individual into error because of the vast nature of the realm of the spirit you will need to have that foundation this is why those who operate in the gift of the spirit and in the ministry offices most powerfully are those who had the background of sound doctrine you would notice that some of the most accurate communicators of the truth of scripture regardless the diversity of gifts at work in them if you trace their lives you will find out that most of them respectfully speaking started from conservative and orthodox assemblies i don't say that to show any sarcasm to what we know as the pentecostal charismatic move but most of them in as much as they were not really exposed to the ministry of the holy spirit but one thing they went through was a methodical system where the foundational truth of the faith was inculcated is that true and so even in the face of error their deviation is not too far because the foundation is solid enough to keep them so it's easy for them to be restored but people who just begin their journey and cherry pick any spiritual truth they wish will find out that they are making the mistake of the man who built upon sand because the same thing that happened to the one on the rock happened to the one on sand it was not the structure it was the foundation hallelujah so my, my passion really when when god provides a platform like this my passion more than the impartation and the miracles and we experience that is to be able to introduce a dimension of the kingdom that is able to further our stability are we together now so that we become grounded we become immovable established in the knowledge of the truth so that our experience will be the answer to the prayer that paul prayed over the church in Colossae, chapter 1 and verse 9 he bowed his knees praying to the father of our lord jesus christ that they be filled with the knowledge of his will number one number two that they be filled with all wisdom and number three they be filled with spiritual understanding psalm 82 and verse 5 says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness he says and the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes let me digress for one minute and just summarize for you in my opinion and based on the authority of scripture and the experience of the fathers what i believe is the recommended roadmap as far as the growth and the maturity of the believer is concerned we are dealing with the book of acts but i just thought that it was important to set that foundation because we're a generation that likes power we like the realm of the spirit and that is wonderful but there has to be this foundational understanding praise the lord let me have just one gentleman anyone that's all right this this one is okay please come now watch this believers this is a believers meeting now if this gentleman gets born again today receives jesus christ and they hand over this gentleman to you respectfully speaking whether as a preacher or a worker in church or one who has been in the faith for at least five years let's do an interview for you what are you going to teach this man if i hand this man over to you and i leave abel kuta and i say i am returning by this time next year i expect to find someone who has made progress in the spirit dear teacher let me know what you are going to teach him what is the first step when i hand him over to you what is he going to learn what do i expect to see by next year if this is not taught the body of christ we will keep piling a lot of children and for as long as there are people who are saved but do not grow they become praise also because if their minds are not transformed satan still has dominion over them are we together now 
yes now this gentleman came to jesus because he received a proposition that jesus can save jesus can lift there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved is that true he believed it and he came to jesus now he's been handed over to the church for growth and for maturity you will be surprised ladies and gentlemen that after five years of meeting this gentleman when you interact with him as a matured believer you will live with a lot of disappointment maybe the only thing that will be added to his life is he may be a pastor in a church now even with that immaturity maybe the only thing that will be added to him he may be a praise and worship leader now pending on whatever gift he has and you will be surprised that just because he's excelling as far as church appointments are concerned he is matured until you speak with him as touching doctrine what do you understand about prayer what do you understand about dominion what do you understand about the supremacy of the world what do you understand about being a spiritual man what do you understand about repentance from dead works what do you understand about the kingdom what do you understand about the holy spirit what do you understand about demons what do you understand about the keys of victory given to the saints what do you understand about the wealth in the kingdom what do you understand about purpose and destiny what do you understand about god about jesus what do you understand about satan what do you understand about the life to come so when you say i am a matured christian by what parameter a i have stayed very long in church b i went through maybe a foundational class and i am now a worker or a deacon c I started my own ministry D I discovered that the gifts of the Spirit had work in my life now I prophesy now I lay hands on the sick you will be shocked to understand that none of those things in themselves sustain the ability to administer spiritual maturity is someone learning tonight before we explore the book of Acts, it's important to just let you know what should you do with this man how can this man transit to become that giant that you saw at the time of his salvation you see our fathers used a formula that we have thrown away most of them will tell you when the missionaries came and they were saved if individuals were saved even if they did not see themselves for five years they knew that five years later they will meet matured and solid and strong christians they were not necessarily educated but my goodness they were spiritual can our growth in this kingdom be predictable can i random pick from any membership regardless the church and be sure that there is a threshold level of spiritual understanding will sustain run an interview to sincere believers who love jesus christ and you will live with tears not because they are bad and some of them are very zealous like i stated in the morning this is exactly what the devil is looking for when hunger collides with ignorance satan can cash in upon that hunger and begin to expose people to extra biblical experiences and because they do not even have a reference they don't know when they are in error are you seeing that now so many people begin to swallow all kinds of things that look spiritual in context but then the formation that those truths are bringing is not christ they are becoming something else because if it is doctrine in partnership with the holy spirit you should become like christ are we together if you want to make say omelette in the kitchen right when you scramble your eggs there is something exact it should look like so you know when to stop that frying because you have a picture of what it should look like and you can by that reference know when you did not get it right So the average believer when confronted with challenges does not even understand the principles of the kingdom accurately to know what keys of the kingdom to engage with understanding you may have heard me say it the average believer will will random pick any truth in the bible and engage it 
the blood of Jesus the fire of the Holy Ghost seed sowing touching and agreeing the prophetic now that person is trying to find a solution but because there is no accurate understanding of the keys of the kingdom and what doors they open we will just random pick and engage anything and the danger is that one will walk but you do not know which one really worked was it the blood of jesus or was it the seed you sowed or was it the prayer was it the night vigil was it the prophetic decree you don't know and most times we don't care so there cannot be mastery the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully every time you kick your car you do the exact same thing you did when you learned how to drive and that car under normal circumstances should not be disobedient because there is a law that is connected with that principle if a demon spirit attacks your family do you know what to do if for any reason you experience delay in your life do you know what to do are we together if the odds are against you do you know what key to engage if you are succeeding in the kingdom do you know how to remain there as a man of god if god trusts you with a congregation do you know how to grow that seed to become a, a ministry and a vision that is impacting people around the world do you know how to train your spirit man so that you can build and grow and expand on the gifts of the spirit within you i'm exposing these various areas to you so that you will see that even the best of us still has work to do it is based on this revelation that hunger is genuinely created so that no matter what our achievements are we run back to scripture we run back to jesus we run back to doctrine there is no arrival mentality in this kingdom because there is so much even in heaven there is room to come up hither you can still see further hallelujah this became a burden and i said the church in nigeria and the church in africa will remain in trouble if we do not obtain grace from god to come up with doctrinal strategies for the growth and the maturity of believers if we do not pay attention to this i guarantee you that in the next 10 to 20 years with the way technology is interrupting the purity of doctrine with the way there are all kinds of mixes coming based on our understanding of westernization a day will come there will be too many versions of christianity you can stand with 10 professing christians and not be able to pick which one is authentic already there are shades of these things around the world and you know i'm sent to the body of christ i don't speak from a standpoint of sarcasm but there has to be authenticity ladies and gentlemen hallelujah then the more complicated one is now when we delve into the book of acts and we have to now deal with the subject of the holy spirit the ministry of the holy spirit he's called the promise of the father the father gave a promise jesus advocated that promise and he prepared the people for that experience that's where we got the theme for this conference are we together now and so in looking at it we must realize that if we are not grounded in doctrine the devil can easily manipulate us and the reason is because the holy spirit is invisible to the optical eyes if the holy spirit were a physical spirit it would be very difficult for us to be in error when jesus walked upon the earth there were many pseudo jesus's but they knew the real jesus but now the holy spirit operates within the realm of the spirit the bible says because you do not know him they do not know him and cannot see him remember john 14 it says but you know him because he is with you and shall be in you so how do you relate with a deity that is invisible how do you confirm if he is the one how do you confirm that a demon spirit has not come to replace his ministry in your life 
the authority of scripture the accuracy of doctrine becomes our safety guard you can know you are standing in truth when you are consistent with doctrine in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was with god in the beginning the bible declares it says through him were all things made and without him that means outside of his influence was not anything made that was made are we together now so i want you to challenge yourself in fact while you are sitting we're going to pray in one minute and ask the lord to expand your desire for genuine spiritual growth to expand your desire to be a seeker of truth that you will open up your heart and intend that i'm not just going to rig my role around my christian experience i intend to grow my growth to be methodical my growth to be intentional i will buy the truth i will subject myself to learning hallelujah praise the name of the lord god bless you thank you now in acts chapter one in acts chapter one the bible lets us know that the entire discourse of acts chapter one was a capture of the discipleship program that happened when jesus resurrected now look how powerful look at the method that jesus used in raising apostles for three and a half years he spent the time immersing them in the truth of the kingdom beginning from his discourse that we know to be the beatitudes he began to teach them the structure and the way that the kingdom operates contrasting the way that the roman government approached life and then the way that the kingdom approached life and he began to expose them he allowed them to ask him questions and he now began to answer those questions and then when we get to john 14 john 15 john 16 he began to introduce them to this personality are we together now yes he said let not your heart be troubled he starts john 14 he says ye believe in god believe also in me that in my father's house there are many mansions he said if it were not so i would have told you he says i go to prepare a place for you and when i go to prepare that place for you i will come down and take you so that where i am there you may be also they didn't understand what he was saying then he now introduced them to this personality but the comforter who is he now he begins to talk to them about another comforter who will come and become an extension of his ministry to them and he told them up front that the world will not appreciate the ministry of that individual that comforter why because they do not see him neither do they know him but he says you know him for he is with you here and he shall be in you he began to teach them when we get to chapter 16 he said i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come the bible says he shall guide you into all truth that he shall take of what is of the father and he shall reveal to you he began to introduce them to the ministry of the holy spirit then his passion then his crucifixion then his burial then his resurrection you would think that when jesus resurrected he would spend time enjoying his victory he had no time for that quite honestly as soon as that coronation happened in heaven he returned back quickly and he called them acts chapter 1 to continue the lecture the bible says he taught them the things that pertain to the kingdom for 40 days he sat them down and was concluding the part of his mentorship 10 days after that they would be having an experience acts chapter 1 now they began to discuss with him and he was talking to them about the restoration of israel and they asked him a question they said will you at this time restore the nation of israel he said it is not for you to know the times that the father has put within his care now verse 8 but you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and that power when it comes upon you he says it will make you witnesses unto me in jerusalem judea samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth when he admonished them like this 
he stood right before them and began to levitate into the heavens then the bible says for 10 days they were camping in that place that we know to be the upper room now let's read scripture acts chapter 2 verse 1 and when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place suddenly there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire and it sat upon each one of them verse 4 says they were filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance the bible says when you read verse 6 it was noised abroad and multitudes came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language they began to speak in different languages and then 12 says they were all amazed and were in doubt saying to one another what meaneth this 13 others mocking said these men are full of new wine but peter standing up with the 11 lifted up his voice and said unto them ye men of judea and all that dwell in jerusalem be this known unto you and hearken to my words for these are not drunken as ye suppose seeing it is but the third hour of the day and then he says but this is that this is that which was spoken of by prophet joel tonight this scripture will be fulfilled in someone's life in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god listen to me if we are to be effective the bible mandates that we follow them not just follow him there are two levels of followership number one is to follow christ who is the author and the finisher of our faith the bible says looking unto jesus is that true who is the author and the finisher of our faith who was the who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despised the shame so ultimately we follow jesus christ but as far as our growth and advancement is concerned the bible says follow them there are always them in every generation them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise and the first them we see that are worthy of our followership are those who are directly mentored by the christ himself the foundational pillars that even heaven recognized their ministry that the new jerusalem was built with 12 foundations with the names of the apostles written there follow them means take note of the pattern that was used for their building and their development and subscribe yourself to that pattern so how did jesus start with them number one he found them a similitude of the new birth and he told them come follow me notice that when you start your journey with jesus christ his first assignment is not to reveal your assignment his first assignment is to reveal himself it is come follow me not follow it if for any reason you find yourself following any other thing including purpose before jesus you are in error the assignment is come follow me not follow destiny not follow a preacher not follow the gift not follow an office come follow me he said and i will make you that is the next level transformation the making so you start by following and then the law of abiding john chapter 15 1 to 8 you must learn to abide followership requires abiding you don't just visit and go to abide means to stay until you are immersed in that body of knowledge that makes for your transformation are we together now jesus spent a major part of his life literally every day mentoring a group of people he broke them into different categories there were things that when he wanted to teach it was only peter james and john that knew there were experiences only those three people had there were experiences only the 12 had there were experiences only the 72 had there were experiences that the crowds had 
but albeit he was involved in the ministry of building them by exposing them to the truth of God's word and then when that process of transformation was sufficient then came this experience in Acts chapter 2 now this was not the first time the heavens were opening and there were all kinds of sounds from heaven we read all through scripture that there have been many instances where the heavens opened and there were sounds coming from heaven are we together now yeah. according to scripture the first biblical record of that opening and sound coming from heaven as far as the fallen man was concerned was the interaction between Cain and, and God. When he killed Abel, God spoke from heaven and Cain had him, he said, Cain, what is this that has happened? Am I my brother's keeper? Where is Abel, he said. And then his judgment started. Then when you read what happened to Hagar and the young lad, when Hagar was dismissed from the house of Abraham, the Bible says she dropped Ishmael so that he would die without her seeing him die. And then God spoke from heaven. And he made an oasis there and rescued Ishmael, sent her back to the house of Abraham. And you continue to see the heavens open and several communications happening. Then the Bible gets to Jesus. And it says that at age 30, he went to john the prophet who was baptizing and when he was dipped in water the bible records that the heavens opened twice the bible records this one at his baptism the second at his transfiguration is that true then there was a voice the bible says the holy spirit came in the similitude of a dove and rested upon him and a voice thundered from that heaven and said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased do you know what that means in other words this man has set a model that has brought satisfaction for me if you ever want to be to bring joy to me this is the reference this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased he said i have accredited him by reason of his compliance to spiritual patterns so hear ye him hear ye him does not just mean listen it means emulate follow his formula and you will bring joy to my heart jesus was driven to the wilderness what is the formula that jesus followed i will tell you he was born a type of the new birth the next thing that happened was he immersed himself to transformation from age 12 he was at the temple god was watching learning under the scribes and the pharisees for 18 years we do not know what really happened to him by age 30 we see that he's full of the word and ready for empowerment listen to me if you want to please the father in your christian experience do not compromise on this formula the new birth experience transformation empowerment that is how to contend for a pattern that will bring glory to the father through your efficiency but many believers here's how we approach it the moment we get born again the next thing we want i'm not talking about empowerment like the holy spirit helping you i mean now to be endued with power for service most people are empty they are not transformed they are not that repentance has not happened and so we contend for transformation we contend for impartation and at the end of it it becomes disaster because the assignment of the anointing is to insist that the word of god you carry does not look like a lie if you do not have any encounter with the word the anointing does not have any ministry in your life the ministry of the anointing starts to the degree to which the word dwells in you are we together now So now, Jesus followed that pattern. Birth, transformation, empowerment, service. You see, now he's training the disciples with that same pattern. He called them a similitude of the new birth. Submitted them to three years, three and a half years thereabout of structural mentorship. 
now they have qualified to receive the promise of the father and the bible says jesus told them tarry ye in jerusalem until ye be endued with power listen carefully now the day of pentecost came and the holy spirit the heavens opened attesting to the fact that they had complied with that pattern i have thought that the glory of god always comes to confirm that his patterns have been followed every time you see the manifestation of god's glory god's glory is a signature it is telling men that someone has walked in keeping with his patterns if you see the glory of god in a man's finances it means he has walked in keeping with the principles the patterns if you see the glory of god in a man's life as far as signs and wonders are concerned it means that he has walked in keeping with the patterns you first know the ways before you see the glory moses said show me your ways before he said show me your glory you don't have to pray for his glory the glory is an effect when you follow the patterns you will see the glory of god if you pay attention to what i'm teaching you tonight you will have a very fruitful christian experience your life will be so efficient it will bring joy and glory to the father are we blessed so the holy spirit came upon them and transformed them now who is this holy spirit that jesus talked about so much who is this holy spirit that came upon jesus in the similitude of a dove who is this holy spirit that even the word seemed to be so helpless until he arrived who is this holy spirit that jesus had to warn the disciples to say tarry don't just use zeal to go into the field wait until he arrives and the bible lets us know that he will not come empty that every time he comes he's coming along with a package the name of that package is power say power shout it one more time power is the currency of the realm of the spirit that means if you meet me as a nigerian and you ask me for something what i will give you most likely is money is that true if you ask me for a bottle of water i may not sell water but i can bring out a thousand naira and give you is that true we call it in economics the purchasing power i have given you the capacity to have that water if you fly to the u.s and you meet someone and he wants to bless you he will not bless you with naira he will bless you with the currency within that territory so when you ask god to give you efficiency he sends you the holy spirit and the holy spirit brings to you the currency of heaven my goodness my god when he lands with that currency of heaven you can hold that currency of heaven like you see a nigerian can still hold dollars is that true and look at the excellency the the the, the whole idea of currencies that one one hundred dollar bill is not the same thing as 100 naira is that true so if i have 200 dollars and you have 200 naira we all have money but the challenge that comes before us will show who is holding hard currency and who is holding whatever it is so don't just say you have power uh -uh. listen carefully there is the power that comes from heaven when the holy spirit comes the bible says he will not come empty you shall receive power you shall receive power man of god you shall receive power businessman you shall receive power he, the same way if you are broke physically on earth like we know you are not evil but you will be incapacitated there are things you cannot do listen to me when you submit a cv to get a job is it really the job you love most times it's not the job the job is simply a channel is that true you respect the job and you respect the owner of that job 
because without the job and the owner there is no possibility of a salary is that true so for for a salary to come you need a relationship with that man and the job you cannot bypass the holy ghost and stretch to obtain power uh -uh. the protocol was so designed that when you come you meet him first please listen believers because we're about to pray now you shall receive power that sound from heaven was not just a sound of wind uh -uh. it was the holy ghost coming he said you shall receive power power to do what i ask you money to do what if you want to buy a house what do you use if you want to pay medical bills what do you use if you want to pay school fees what do you use is that true if you want to travel and pay your air ticket what do you use if there's all kinds of family quarrel over money and you want to settle it what do you use so if i give you money what did i really give you i gave you more than an airfare i gave you peace in it i gave you capacity for advancement are we together now now watch this if you have money and you only use it for medical bills you are shortchanging the potentials of that money because the same money that you use to pay bills is the same money that can buy you a house is the same money that can send your children to good schools so when he says you shall receive power he didn't mean you shall receive something that will be used only when you are a preacher uh -uh. i am giving you an advantage that lifts you beyond the realm of the ordinary man please believe what i'm telling you you will be ineffective if you reject the revelation of this sound from heaven most believers have run away from the power of the holy spirit and you ask them why they will say i'm not a preacher i don't need it i am not a prophet i don't need it i am not an apostle i don't need it but you give anybody money at the gate he will not say i'm not a worker he will not say i'm a female he will not say i'm a male the moment you bring out money they will collect it because they know that it can serve every purpose listen when you stand in a restaurant or you stand in a mall to shop the goods you are picking will not ask you how old you are the goods you are picking will not ask you what is your gender the goods you are picking will not ask you your background there is only one requirement do you have the purchasing power if that television is five hundred thousand or 1.5 million if you can drop the money there you will pick it and the television will not refuse to go it will follow you that means there is a gift that god can give you beyond your background beyond your gender beyond the limitations of your family first the holy spirit and with the holy spirit power i believe this i study the fathers of faith from history and even the ones who are alive today none of them none of them rejected this gift he said you shall receive that means you can reject it many of us have rejected it but tonight god is giving you an opportunity again to receive power power to heal power to deliver power to transform power to turn things around power to rise beyond the grip and the limitations of 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 the vicissitudes of life power against the forces of darkness that sit upon the destinies of people listen to me there are people like i said in the morning great voices that should be heard across the globe but there are forces sitting on people's destiny and many of us are wishing that one day something would happen and jesus knew he said tarry now you have tarried again and he's coming to you saying i brought this in 2009 you rejected it 
now you see what it has cost your ministry i brought it in 2015 you rejected it look what it has cost your family if that power were not there or if that power were there you probably would not be at this level now he has come to you again in this conference and some of you i will not be surprised if you are here and you will reject him reject the holy ghost reject his power and he will back up in peace and allow you recycle pain again in ministry recycle pain again in destiny watch the devil destroy your family again watch your life go through circles of pain giving all kinds of explanations whereas there is power available for you how many of you have been stranded financially especially when you wanted to buy something and then you got to a season in your life where you came into more than enough and you went back to the same thing you know that that dominion joy of being able to purchase what frustrated you yesterday that's what god wants to do for you today that by the time you return from this conference the powers that refuse to give way you go back from this conference and you say in the name of jesus christ i didn't come empty peter had been passing the gate beautiful i am sure the blind man he may not know them but they knew him they knew his condition and i'm sure peter will say well, i wish i had the power i wish i had the power i wish i had the power and jesus said Tari, something is about to come upon you the next time he was going to pray when he saw that man he said no yesterday's limitation cannot be tomorrow's limitation silver and gold i may not have but such as i have i received something when the holy ghost came such as i have such as i have Hear what Peter was saying. I know what I don't have, but I know what I have. I know what I don't have, the privilege of a superior background, but I know what I have, the power to fit all that background. I know what I don't have, the privilege to be raised by responsible fathers and mothers, you may say, but now I know what I have, power. Listen to me. Please listen. When God was calling me into ministry, I prayed and I said, Lord, I have watched people do ministry without the power of the Holy Spirit. I have watched people give explanations and got frustrated. I have watched people destroy ministries like being dropped in the den of lions. And I said, Lord, I do not want the kind of ministry where I will watch the sick and give them explanations and have them go back like that i don't want the kind of ministry where i will pray and speak over people they will shout amen with all their hearts and return with no testimonies how will i can't live with my conscience judging me every day that this the problem is not their believing they had faith enough to come for your meeting when a patient meets a doctor he has done his own part the remaining now is the doctor hear me abel kuta there are many of you who have done well as far as submitting yourself to doctrine and truth but can i tell you the way you want to go about your life and destiny without power i guarantee you you will be frustrated believe me believe me believe me there are demonic forces that will not allow you rise to become an expression of what jesus wants say unto god how terrible art thou in thy ways it is through the greatness of thy power the the greatness of thy power not your explanation not your stories the greatness of your power man of god the gates of ministry will not open just because you are sincere you need power there are gates that will not let you rise there are gates that will not let sinners come to be saved listen he said i desire to come to you even i paul once and again but satan hindered us go 
just help those under the anointing listen to me brothers and sisters hear me please look up i have been oppressed by demon spirits this man talking to you i'm not just telling you what i read in a book i know the kind of background i came from nothing rises to a global scale no i started ministry as a man of god and i was still being oppressed by demon spirits most people would not be honest to admit this and tell you i was not an evil person yet these spirits will come and oppress me i would shout in the name of jesus like i was taught and they didn't go and because of the prophetic i will see them it's not like they're just pressing me i'm seeing this spirit and i'm saying the bible says i give you power where is it now listen someone has to get angry in this place this night and say enough is enough i'm not going to let things continue to be powerless christianity resultless christianity i keep giving all kinds of trust explanation no sir hear me hear me your bible is full of the story of men who knew how to receive power and knew how to operate it there was a man who lived like a god called elisha one time naaman the bible says the captain of the syrian army a valiant man in war but he was leprous and a little slave girl who served his wife she said oh there is a man that i can recommend for you if you have the humility of meeting that man listen to me they now wrote a letter to the king and the king said you see this trouble these people are just looking for an occasion for war when elisha had it he said where is the man send him and let him know there is a prophet in israel ah, i was told one time there was a time that they brought someone with a twisted face to archbishop idahosa of blessed memory do you know what he did he told the man look up and the man looked up he said god this man was created in your image if this is how you look leave him like that we need to repent as a generation this bragging we brag about power we've not seen anything those we call miracle workers in our generation were ushers in the bible in fact they were in the welfare department you see the requirement to be a worker in welfare in the bible you you needed to have revelation equal to a man of god to serve tables listen to me i know that power has been abused i know that there are people who have merchandised it but can i tell you abel kuta please hear me if it is the move of god you want to see if it is revival you want to see if he's bringing this territory under the influence of the christ let me tell you this our explanations and stories the world will soon become tired of us they are already becoming tired of us that's why our children now are not interested in the things of god they prefer technology they will be in church and they are browsing you call jesus is as if you call satan for them we need power we need power Mena salakato sata bragati gate balata shalada balakata skata kate barakate kotos skada brante kaparos katika lakata ba a christianity with results a christianity with genuine proofs that in one day you can bring glory to jesus in one day you can bring glory to jesus listen to me hear me please i want you to be patient tonight i don't intend to keep us here for long but i want you to be patient because that sound from heaven will echo in this place again one more time 
one more time i can't guarantee that everybody will catch that fire but i know there must be someone here tonight someone tired of explanations without results me please look at me can i tell you this if we reject the ministry of the holy spirit and we reject the power that he's brought to us i was watching a video of one of the last standing old yoruba fathers who was part of the move of a particular denomination he was talking in yoruba and tears were coming out of my eyes I said god what happened to us what where did we miss it how did we backslide is it beyond recovery my goodness i was reading about a dear people that i know very much charles and francis hunter sir in one meeting they raised 100 people from the wheelchair 100 if one person stands up from the wheelchair now i can brag and make noise as if i brought heaven down and took it back up this 100 in a service one hundred some of the fathers that god raised even from your region these were men that were like herbalists as soon as you enter their house before you sit down you are already shaking the kind of power that came upon them they can speak to you in yoruba and open your heavens they were not revealing what will happen they were making it happen can i tell you the truth with all due respect and honor to our fathers remember that our fathers were their students so to tell you the kind of students they trained There were things that were written in this bible they were not parables they were not parables man of god do you know what will happen to your church in all honesty when you truly receive power that you declare over your members and in one night a family with nine barren women that their wombs have refused to open because of witchcraft opens like a door where will you hide that testimony that a popular madman on your street like the madman in gadara now becomes healed and on sunday he's dressed in suit not stage managed miracles that one day someone passes a mortuary on his way to go and pray and suddenly starts hearing a shout from inside the mortuary i'm not dead oh open that door and the newspaper comes to capture it oh god where are you coming from he says from heaven somebody on earth refused to allow me go they held me and brought me back except we don't believe in this bible i came tonight with a cry to tell you there is more oh dear prayer warrior there is more it's good to pray but let your prayer produce results dear preacher there is more i don't mean to insult or challenge or you know negatively communicate anything but are you aware of the way we beg members why didn't you come to church i am not in the mood okay am i doing something wrong can you where, where did you find that in the bible i'm not saying to not treat people well don't get me wrong in the days of the generals a service will be starting 6 p.m in the morning by two o'clock or 12 there are already people queuing because they knew that if you saw those men it was like you saw god but let me tell you this before we begin to, we begin to pray 
almost every one of these men they died with a prophecy that there is coming a move of the spirit they died with a prophecy they said everything we saw can i tell you i've had the privilege to meet a few people who met these generals and my question to them is please tell me what did they tell you and almost every one of them will tell you that they left with a prophecy that that hand of god is coming again there are worshipers that are going to arise in power there are men of god that you we have not seen the apostolic and the prophetic you wait and see the breed of of those god is walking on abel could i hear me do not elude yourself from this move in the next two minutes i like you to forget about who is at your left or right i like you to cry before god and say power from heaven fall upon my destiny power from heaven upon my destiny Like the 
follow me. You are about to receive something that will change your life forever. of encounter do to me what you want ah. this is the place of surrender do to me what you want ah. this is the place where my life is changed do to me what you want. She na 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 na. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now please hear me. I want to begin to pray for you. The first thing we are starting with tonight is a real impartation. Listen, believe me when I tell you you need the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't assume you have it. If it is not there, it is not there. There are ministries, there are individuals that are in desperate need for the power of the Holy Spirit. There is no need to sit down wishing for something that can be yours. For this promise is for you and for your children as many as are afar off. Even as many as the Lord will call. Hallelujah. Now please hear me. I want to pray right now. I want you to hold those all those who begin to run by the spirit just bring them out here gently there is a very mighty impartation that is coming on you right now i want to pray for you father in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god here in this treasured land of abel Okuta, standing from here and speaking to the nations there are men and women you are calling even at this time to give them strange experiences of impartation right now even as you have revealed to me i stretch my hands from the front to the back the left to the right as many of these people right now please whether you are an usher or not just bring them out those under the anointing at the count of three that fire is coming upon someone is an ignition of the spirit are you ready one Two, three, take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. Take that fire. There is a specific kind of impartation that God is doing with this fire. We are here for Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts. Shanandes Kalika Bashalaka. 
hear me over the last three months the holy spirit has been speaking to me about a restoration of the healing ministry the lord began to speak to me that we have really lost the healing ministry there are people who heal but there are few people who have really gotten this healing mantle i believe that there will be a distribution of such graces here wherever you are i want to pray father there are men and women who must carry help that lady please help this lady must carry this mantle of healing at the count of three i want you to shout jesus not everyone but there are people who must carry this mantle are you ready now one two three shout jesus take that fire 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 he shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover help that woman please help that woman mantles are falling here tonight anointings are falling here tonight graces are falling here tonight for the kings to arise for revival to return for the kings to be born for revival to return yeah. Ali Ali Yo oh, Ali Yo oh, oh, oh. Ali Ali Yo oh, 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 oh. Ali Ali Yo oh, Ali Yo oh, oh, oh. Ali Ali Yo oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah Now we are still praying Please I want you to give me give me a mic hold on please I want to do something prophetic here I'm going to invite Minister Dusin to come up and just any song in his spirit. I believe there will be a transference of mantles. Hear me? There are prophetic psalmists that will need to arise. Not, not just composing what does not edify. Please listen to me. Some of you have been called into the ministry of prophetic psalmistry. But for a long time, you are in hiding like Gideon. A shofar is about to come from the realm of the spirit and hear me please as the man of god raises this song some of you songs young and old will begin to rise from within your spirit man yes sir please spirit of the sovereign lord shaka taka 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 make your presence
are receiving an impartation. Open up your spirit through the Lord, through the sounds of worship you are receiving. to Christ revealing everything in obedience to Christ realigning everything restoring everything is rebirthing everything in obedience to hallelujah now listen please listen i'd like you to place your hand on your chest if you have seen any kind of oppression in your life and your family i want to pray the man of god is still going to worship listen to me i want to pray right now here it's already filled up so you may not need to bring them out just help them there but i want to declare fire is falling from heaven there are men and women here who have been under all kinds of oppression the bible says for this purpose was the son of god made manifest that he may destroy the works of the evil ones now hear me at the count of three i'm going to ask you to shout the name jesus and if god be god everything that has refused to give way for the king of glory to come in he must give way right now and the power of god will come upon you that fire will frustrate the counsel of darkness i want you to shout from the depth of your heart that name that is above all names are you ready now father i decree and declare that everyone here who is oppressed everyone and every family every business and every ministry we come in the name of the lord god of heaven and we decree and declare as we shout that name let every mountain let every other name let every enchantment let every activity of wizardry let every activity of star gazers let it come to an end are you ready now one two three shout jesus i command every foul spirit go now go now go now darkness go go now out of their lives out of their ministries out of their businesses Hallelujah. Hold on, please. Hallelujah. Who is Israel? Oh dear, we don't have time. Who is Israel? You are wearing a black t-shirt. Israel. Israel, you are wearing a black t-shirt. This is what I'm seeing. Is there someone like that? Israel, you are wearing a black t-shirt. What I'm seeing is a gentleman with a black t-shirt. Us. Israel. What's your name? Huh? Please help us with another mic. Sound people. Israel, Israel. Israel, from where? Abiyakuta. God wants to change the life of your family, my friend. I don't know you, but I, do you believe in the power of the prophetic? Sir. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Deborah. Who is Deborah? My God. My spirit is fired up this night. 
Shandi Lada, Vivian. I'm hearing the name Vivian. Who is Vivian? Deborah. I'm hearing a name Vivian. Vivian, you are wearing a t-shirt, black and white. Vivian. Black and white t-shirt. A lady. Vivian. Realigning everything. Please don't come out at random. I want to pray for you. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. As soon as that comes, I'll pray for you. This is what I just saw. In the name of Jesus, everything that represents the workings of darkness. There is a woman here. You have you are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I'm seeing four years. Where are you? Four years, no child. Come and receive your miracle now. Four years, no child make sure you are married four years no child in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare the power of god is coming on one of you here right now in the name that is above all names may that fire fall right now in the name of jesus please don't come out at random let's let's maintain some level of order we have a few minutes and i'm done come what's your name huh? hold on please i want to pray for you four years no child i know many of you it's not four years obedience is better than sacrifice i will still pray for you four years you four years too four years four years what's your name is the mic working victoria what's your name huh? is it oye tunde who is that what's your name do you know her is your husband here where is he i'm seeing two of you standing and the lord is saying i should pray even for his finances where is he oga can you run and come god wants to visit you don't be embarrassed this is a family of faith please come and stand here sir you see why it's good to invite people to the house of god it's not for showmanship please hold your wife i want to pray for you four years you believe in the power of jesus you will never forget this conference for the rest of your life i'm going to pray for you but in the name of jesus oyetunde also that's your name my dear what's the name okay right now i stretch my hands and i decree and declare standing in faith with every vessel here shanice kali brandagada madam i'm seeing something come out of your stomach eh? out now the name of jesus christ the son of the living god according to the time of life help her i decree and declare return with your child god is giving you a baby girl this is what i'm seeing in my vision and sir, the Lord instructed me to pray over your finances. I decree and declare, let things shift for you right now. For all of you who are out here trusting God for the fruit of the womb, in the name of Jesus, the power of God is coming on one of you. Afterwards, I'll just speak over you. This is what God is revealing to me. All those who are standing right now, there's such an anointing coming on one of you. We have to hurry up and walk with time. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the spirit that is back of this, it must go now. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm seeing fire just coming on you. The Lord is burning everything that is responsible for this helper place. This season of barrenness. I decree and declare to you, according to the time of life, weep not for the book is opened. In the name of Jesus Christ. Boyega, who is Boyega? I'm hearing a name. Boyega. Is there someone like that? Boyega. What's your name, sir? You're a preacher? Can I pray for you, sir? I hope you're not embarrassed. Please come. Things are about to shift in your ministry. You see we are product of god's mercy and grace there is absolutely no reason to pride 
and glory except in the name of the lord when you see these kinds of things happen it is more than a man being anointed is jesus revealed he's been revealed in the midst of his people i interject to say this because usually in the presence of mighty manifestations like this it is easy to exalt the man more than jesus thank god for the honor that comes with priesthood but can i tell you there is only one who deserves every glory and every lifting here and we must not be ashamed to let the nations know that we were taught well let the nations know that he's built us well our assignment is to see him lifted and he said that if i be lifted up from the earth you see if i be lifted up from the earth jane i'm hearing a name jane jane oh that's that's really the song shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love so i want to pray for you because you have come out in honor to the word of the lord transference is a privilege it's an election of grace i assure you there is a man of god right now i don't know where you are but there is such a mighty anointing coming on you you are a man of god in ministry already a man of god right now there is such an anointing and the lord is telling me that it's a twin combination of the teaching ministry and the prophetic that mantle help him please father please hold my hand sir in the name of jesus christ sir by the privilege of this election of grace i decree and declare according to the word of the lord step into a new season of power with god in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ my friend come your life is about to change i don't know you but let me tell you this the lord himself is about to take you to a dimension in the prophetic and the apostolic is starting as a, like a prayer ministry but is a real apostolic and prophetic ministry god is training you and god is building you and listen to me there is one secret that has kept you humility maintain it maintain it no matter how god lifts you let me use this as an encouragement to many people no matter how far god lifts you the moment pride begins to come fight it like you fight satan don't ever allow any result make you fight those who god used to help you whether you like them or not whether you believe in them or not whether you think you are more anointed than them or not in your humility is your immunity i don't know this man i don't pray for people carelessly i fear god but i want to pray for you he's in ministry sir here in oh i see really my brother you are going to carry very ancient mantles fathers that have died you write what i'm telling you have you read about parking diomi have you read about that man huh? i like you if you can go and read his material read it and pray there is something from that lineage that is needed in your destiny go and write what i'm saying just believe what i'm telling you in the name of jesus christ by the election of grace i release you step into a new season power of the holy ghost in the name of jesus christ a new season may your eyes be open may your hands be taught to war in the name of jesus christ why are you here we have to pray for the sick deborah hold hold them one of you will start running now the power of god will come on you these things are supernatural just please be sensitive don't mind me let me just do my crazy thing here we'll soon 
will soon be done i don't know why god does this thing one of you literally the power of god is a is is, is victory over delay that's what is happening it's not like you are running intentionally the part is an anointing that will come upon you and it will just be like you are running like elijah just run mr man you are not jane now jane is a female name what is he doing here huh okay don't well i can't i'm just going to pray for you one of you will start running now by the spirit in the name of jesus father that mantle and that grace that makes even for restoration victory over delay may that grace be administered right now by the power of the holy spirit and let this be a new season even by the spirit of god that everything that represents the operation of delay we crush it now by the spirit of the living god my friend lift your hands this man with monkey jacket in the name of jesus i just saw oil coming on your head right now take that grace right now in the name of jesus christ that anointing will come on you you will never be the same again i don't know who this man is but god is going to use you mightily you are drinking of a very very ancient wine in the name of jesus may god shift you to new levels in the spirit in the name of jesus christ i rebuke that spirit this lady look at me my dear i command that spirit to leave now it must let you go and release your family by the power that raised christ from the dead in the name of jesus christ let me just pray for the sick we may not have time for testimonies tonight unfortunately because we have to respect our time i'm going to pray for the sick and i'll do the final impartation one day god is going to grant us grace somewhere where god will grant us grace to do a vigil one day and we'll have the time to really take the time to minister minister greatly to people mr dusin the lord is speaking to me about i don't I, I of course i know your team but this lady the lord is saying i should tell you you are entering your season of reward this this lady that you are entering your season of reward i believe that what he says to one he says to all but in the name of jesus that's why i i i, I just informed him before praying i'm praying for you i don't know what is that reward that you must step into in this season honestly i release you by the prophetic and i declare step into it Amen. and by extension i pray for your colleagues that you will step into the same grace Amen. in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ there is a lady from this city who is going to rise as a worshiper listen to what i'm saying write it down there is a lady that god is working on you see what god is doing with you know some of the ladies the women that god is using in this nation and across people don't just rise like that there is a way god lifts people hear what i'm saying from this city it will be as if she just came out from nowhere all of a sudden every church will be interested in inviting her people will want to hear her songs it is just one song one that god is going to bring and that is what is going to announce that lady lord as you have revealed to me whether she's here or not oh god of heaven i pray by the power of the holy spirit visit that lady and i pray like you did mary launch her into this new season where she will sing your praises to the nations and like minister Dunsin, minister hear me everyone here who has desired to walk in prophetic psalmistry there is a difference between just ministering and singing and prophetic psalmistry that was the reason why i requested him to come and stand here i have seen what god has done in his life in prophetic psalmistry and in the name of jesus i pray for you you don't have to bring them out when they are under the anointing lord wherever you are at least seven people who must carry this grace for worship in a definite way wherever you are i stretch my hand as he's stretching his hand may that grace right now Paris, Shani, Nakash, Kobadi, Data. 
receive that grace right now take that grace right now take that grace right now some of you the angel of the lord will wake you in the night oh i tell you this and give you songs from heaven songs that you will write they will become ladders that will lead the nations to worship in the name of jesus christ now please hear me if you are trusting god for a miracle in your body have a few minutes to be here just lay your hands right now as we worship in your presence there is healing Lay your hands there. It's flowing. I want you to agree with me as I pray for you. Listen to me. Help them, please. The healing power of Jesus is touching people. I truly believe in the healing ministry. I believe that Jesus heals. I believe that miracles are not a manipulation. There are genuine miracles. And right now, just breathe your name upon me. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Ah, Shalena Sabaruziata. Your hair hates your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. One more time, and I'll pray for you right now. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. His name is powerful. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. His name is mighty. Able to save. Your able to heal. Is your name. Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Now agree with me. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ every spirit that is back of any infirmity plaguing your life and plaguing your body according to the integrity of Scripture the Bible declares that by his tribes we were healed please help them help those under the anointing my God such a move of the healing power help that gentleman be healed now be healed now every eye condition be healed in the name of Jesus every bone condition hear the word of the Lord be healed in the name of Jesus palpitations be healed right now in the name of Jesus I'm hearing the name gastritis in the name of Jesus be healed right now any terminal disease HIV cancer we cost you in the name of Jesus Christ There is someone you have a swelling around the side of your your cheek it, it it looks like mom's but it stayed there for unnecessarily long the power of god is touching you right now be healed in the name of jesus it looks like muzzle pool but it has remained there almost as if you cannot stand for long your kneecap shakes by the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be healing for you right now. 
now whether i mention your case or not in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god i declare life and healing now perfection and wholeness now in the name of jesus christ and i pray finally let me make an altar call i have to make an altar call can, can you give me a minute for an altar call now when i make the altar call and then we'll pray finally and we're done there's no need cajoling listen to me jesus is truly the way the truth and life this is not just a christian talk it is true you are here and you are saying apostle i truly need jesus i came for this believers conference do not end tonight's meeting without giving me an opportunity please we are still standing or those who are saying apostle i remember giving my life to jesus but as it is my life has gone haywire if you belong to any of that group wherever you are please i like you to run like there's fire in the mountain to the front here i'm going to count five after five that will be all do not wait for anyone be the first to come one celebrate them as they come young and old together two don't allow anybody sit down or stop you from coming when you know you should come to jesus come 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 run to jesus two Abel Kuta, is this how you celebrate salvation jesus is bringing many to him come please allow those who need to come to come if they are coming for salvation please let them come Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed. There's no need to be ashamed. Run to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now listen, all of you who are in front, on behalf of Jesus, who is the head of the church, I salute and I celebrate you for making this conscious decision coming to jesus can i tell you this someday very soon this life will fold like a curtain and it will be the beginning of another season i know this is a message that is not very popular again but let me say it one more time jesus is coming soon believe me when i tell you this sooner than the first time you heard this sentence jesus is coming one glorious morning you will get up trying to go to your place of work i would get up trying to run and take a flight and go for administration only that will find out there may not be need for it again his majesty coming in the brightness of the cloud we will see him as he is whether we believe him or not that day we will see him and the bible says the dead in christ will arise first and we who are alive and remain we will be caught up in the air and there will be that glorious exit we will sing your songs minister dunsin while we ascend we will sing those songs of victory the triumphant ones and wave the earth and his pride one more time and can i tell you this it is a risk to not know jesus this is not planting fear it is the truth we will join the cloud of witnesses what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus i'll sing and shout the victory lift your right hand high to heaven i want you to say this loud and clear let it be from the depth of your heart shout it say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i believe 
that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification according to the authority of scripture i declare that i am a child of god a recipient of the life of god i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i reign in life the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight until forever i am a child of god amen father in the name of jesus i stretch my hand toward these ones and i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit your sins are forgiven based on the authority of scripture and i declare that you are recipients of eternal life even the life of god from today the power to live a victorious christian life let it be released upon you you go forward ever and backward never in jesus name now please all of you there is the counselors are waving the placard please can we celebrate them all of you as you move to my right everyone please let's celebrate them we're almost on hallelujah let me encourage you finally please listen Abel Kuta. do not allow anything stop your pursuit of Jesus Christ let it not be that after a conference like this you will enjoy the moment for a few days only to return back to the way things were it is my encouragement and I led my voice with Pastor Shola all the organizers and every servant of god the fathers of the faith that are in this land to encourage you let it be from the depth of your heart that any time we meet again we will find you on fire loving jesus serving jesus committed to the house of god committed to soul winning committed to your spiritual growth committed to your relationship with jesus and committed to your purpose and your destiny and for this may the lord grant you grace in the name of jesus christ it was my honor ministering the word of the lord to you i pray that the lord will bless you in jesus name thank you